going through the Texans tra- transactions this year, it's just like, oh my gosh, it's just filling. That's just filling. Bo- it's just, and it seems like, man, they need like a seventy man roster because it's just all guys. It's just all guys. That's all. I mean, all of the names that they bring in. I know you got to fill the roster and you got to fill. Camp, you need camp bodies and you need all of this stuff. But it seems like every guy that they sign is a camp body. Maybe. You know, oh, you got some real Shaq Mason is different. Yeah, maybe yeah, Jimmy no. Ward. Maybe Jimmy Ward is different. We'll see. Yeah, um, I think that we'll see with Hassan Ridgeway, Ridgeway and we'll see, we'll with, see. with Ninkovich. I mean, you, you have is to remember Hassan a lot Ridgeway of these guys. A, a, a plus, pl- yeah, but player. you don't want to sign a multi-year deal unless it's legit. You know, you're not. You don't really want to sign if you're a one a one year deal to let you get back to the market next year. You don't want to sign. I a, understand a that, but there are price. none. You know what other teams are doing? Signing multi-year deals with real guys. Three year deals. Some teams are. Some yeah, teams some aren't. Some teams are. Yeah. Yeah. I th- I really think they're playing the compensatory pick game. So they're not going to get any off of this year's because they have a bunch of signings. I really think they're going to let a bunch of these guys walk, not sign as many in a year after they have all these draft picks. And they're going to try to load up on, you know, additional compensatory picks. How many will that be? You, you might get as many as four, depending on. You have to have four more. Now, you have to have four more qualifying departures than signings. That's how that works. And a qualifying offer has to be – it can't be a slappy offer where a guy signs for, you know, one year, $2 million or whatever. That's not going to qualify for a compensatory pick. Your deals, they have to – somebody has to sign your free agent to a deal that qualifies. It, it's not crazy to get a seventh-round pick but um, or sixth-round pick. But, yeah, I think, they're, I think they're playing the compensatory pick game based on how many – based on how many players they're signing this year so who so could be the, gone in a they're year. They're playing the third round pick guy. The, no, no, third round is not you're not going to get that except for maybe Shaq Mason. Well, right, that's what I'm Shaq saying. Shaq Mason What's could, the compensatory pick? Game? Well, you could it's fifth rounders, seventh rounders. You could get Shaq. Well, if <laughs> you if you flip-flop 6 and 7 and you pick up a fourth rounder for Shaq, then you just rented Shaq Lawson and pick up a fourth rounder. Like you actually that's a that's a plus. For some of these guys, sometimes teams will make trades in the middle of the year because they know a guy's a free agent and they're going to let him walk so they can pick up a compensatory pick. Like they may trade a future seventh for a guy because they think he'll sign a deal that will be equal to a fifth or sixth. You actually, you actually make, you actually pick something up in that. But um, no, I get it. I'm just not a big fan of trading well, for a bunch of fifth and seventh rounders. But you got to be close. Well, there's a strategy. You got to nobody. Nobody likes adding unless you're closer. Ryan Poles just happens to have a ton of money, and so he's buying core players. I don't think the Texans are looking to buy core players right now. They don't have the same money as the Bears. No. And they also are going to have to – well, who are they going to have to sign? Oh, maybe no, Tunsil. Maybe Tunsil. Yeah. Yeah, and Titus. If you plan on trading him, then there's no reason not to go sign free agents. Yeah. You should have been in on Jawan Taylor if you were going to trade Laramie Tunsil. But Juwan Taylor went to – didn't he go to the Chiefs? Yes. I think yeah. You're right. Yep. So, I don't think – so, the Laramie Tunsil stuff is done. That's not – he. Laramie Tunsil is going to get a deal with the Texans. That's going to happen. They're going to keep him. I think that's going to happen. Especially if you're drafting, for example, Bryce Young. You better have an accomplished left tackle in there. Frankly, you better have two accomplished, accomplished tackles. Okay, we have not even talked about this. Alan Lazard signed a four-year, uh, $44 million deal with the Jets. He is a wide receiver from Iowa State who's played with Aaron Rodgers over in Green Bay the last four years. Uh, Aaron Rodgers had a wish list come out that said, here's what he would like if he goes over to the Jets. He'd like his best friend, Randall Cobb. He wants um, Alan Lazard, who he's come to really like from the Packers. He wants Mercedes Lewis, uh, Mercedes Lewis, who's a good blocking tight end, not a pass catcher, but a blocker, which is actually not crazy. So, and he'd like Odell Beckham Jr., the human, you know, club cancer, the guy who is, it's all about Odell Beckham all the time, for the most part. It has been. A guy who tried to get signed last year and paid now, despite the fact that he was going to make Aaron Rodgers might be a different guy. Might be, but he's in New York again. Yeah, but he was in LA. He wasn't bad. No, but he no. was wasn't even there a full and year. He wasn't, wasn't even there a half year. No, but that was still it's still 
I think he listen. He had to put up with Giants quarterbacks and 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 Cleveland quarterbacks. Yeah, no, that's true. But you basically are letting your quarterback remake your entire yeah, no, wide receiver I agree. with Randall Cobb. Yeah, Randall Cobb's not better than Elijah Moore. That should never in a billion years happen. Garrett Wilson must be a top one or two option. He was rookie of the year. Okay, you want to bring in Lazard? That's fine. I get that. Denzel Mims has not been the right player. You want to bring in. Odell Beckham Jr. Okay, I can understand that. So you have Elijah, you have Elijah no, it's Randall Moore. Cobb. That's yeah, that's just. But Randall Cobb should never be on this team ever. But, but if that's the the price of getting Aaron Rodgers, but but it just tells you that the biggest diva in sports right now. Okay, so Durant and Ky- Kyrie are way way up there, way way up. There. No, but uh, not according to Dream Shake. He's not. He he's well, beloved he's a by Durant. his teammates. We, yeah, we can't. We, Nothing he says about Durant is admissible in court. We already know. It, it, he loves Durant more than anything in the world. So nothing he says is admissible. I this wish guy, my wife loves me as much as he loves Durant. He loves Durant. Like, Durant literally forces a way out of wherever he wants to go. and So he, he, can't, he can't talk. Um, Kyrie is obviously really, really bad. But Aaron Rodgers is right up there with him. Aaron Rodgers held... The, hot, the the Packers hostage two years ago. Then he does this darkness retreat. Then he's like, he won't say anything except on the Pat McAfee show. Right, and today he he's, might on, pa- he's on McAfee today. I know, he's on today. He hasn't decided. Is he out of the darkness? A decision will come soon. Today he'll say yes, and the trade will go down today. It'll be official today. They'll make a trade because Aaron's got to announce something on his own terms on the Pat McAfee show where he's demanding certain wide receivers come with him. Like, what kind of diva is this? Aaron Rodgers has turned into such a pain in the ass. He is crazy talented, but can you imagine what happens when he's not as talented? And if the Packers think that he's slipping, maybe that's why they're I, – I think the Packers have just said, we can't do this anymore. We know he's better than Jordan Love. We just – it's 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 been a long run. It's been 15 years, longer than that, 17 years. We just can't keep doing this. Yeah. I think they just got tired of no, his the Packers act. are dumb. I had heard he was a an issue when they when they had McCarthy at head coach. Like this is you know, but you put up with it because he's a great quarterback. And now they're to the point where they just say, We let, let's just see what love has. We're just done doing this. Aaron Rodgers will he or won't he play? We bent over backwards to get him into camp when he wanted to trade or, or potentially retire. We're not doing this anymore. And so now he's the Jets. He's going to be the Jets' problem, and they're going to have to deal with it. And now they're going to make roster moves based on Aaron Rodgers saying they, they want you know what he wants, even though he's never thrown to Garrett Wilson. I mean, Garrett Wilson's a good player, but Elijah Moore. I think he'll love Elijah Moore, but we'll see. Because if you have Odell Beckham, Elijah Moore may not play anymore. Maybe you do have to trade him. And you're trading him for what? A guy coming off an ACL who's getting older. You got Alan Lazard, who's speed deficient. You do have Garrett Wilson, who has, you know, got some juice. Mercedes Lewis, who's at, Lewis, who's at the end of his career, as a one-year blocking tight end. I don't know. I, I don't believe in one player having that much power to change and alter teams. We've seen it with LeBron; it's been a disaster. And now Aaron Rodgers is telling the Jets to do it. Don't love it. 